Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy, Kevin Forte. Guys, we're taking a look today, heading into the Seattle expansion draft. We're going to look at a bunch of names that I think are going to be in the conversation for trade, whether that's before the expansion, after the expansion, potentially guys that get picked by the Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. We'll be looking at all of those players in this video. If you guys like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL and more videos just like this one, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. Guys, let's take a look at some of these names. So a lot of these guys are, you have to look at the way the team is protecting their protected list and what their intentions are. Certain teams, it's about protecting depth in goaltending other teams it's about unloading salary cap like the tampa bay lightning so we'll be getting into all those mixes of players trying to keep only three defensemen protected which we we're going to talk about that with minnesota once again uh so we'll be looking at all of that we're getting into that that seattle kraken fever right now and um and i'm pretty excited so this is a good topic for today so we're going to start off in Washington. That's why I'm wearing this Capitals jersey. Haven't worn it that much. I will be talking about Ovechkin in the next couple of days because of his situation. But we're taking a look today at Vitek Vanacek. Now, he is the backup goaltender, or really for most of the season was a starter for the Capitals when Ilya Samsonov went down with the injury, was out because of the bug, um, actually was suspended. So Vitek Vanacek came in and really was a good goaltender for <clears throat> excuse me for the Washington Capitals at points this season. And it makes you wonder, his contract ends next offseason, he is a restricted free agent next summer. You wonder if teams like the Seattle Kraken or potentially teams that need help in between the pipes, like the San Jose Sharks, the Edmonton Oilers, uh Honestly, as crazy as it sounds, maybe even teams like the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, I'm not saying Vanacek would go to the Pittsburgh Penguins, but teams that need goaltending depth. Vitek Vanacek would be a nice addition to those teams. Now, the question is, there's different ways to look at how these teams could get a guy like Vanacek. Do they go straight to Washington and say, hey, listen, we know you're not going to protect Vitek Vanacek. We'll take him for a third round pick. And now the Oilers or the Sharks now have a starting goaltender on their roster for next season and is much younger and they desperately need that so that could be a situation there where Vanacek gets moved before the expansion draft now we could also see the situation where the Seattle Kraken take said Vitek Vanacek and then they start to ask those teams like the Penguins like the Sharks like the Oilers and say hey you know what we got a backup goal we got a goaltender here you need goaltending help what do you want for him and that way, you could see a team like Pittsburgh, if they really liked Vitek Vanacek, instead of trading him straight from Washington, you pluck him from Seattle. So that is something you could see, where the Seattle Kraken do a little bit of a flip, and that could be something they look at. And maybe that gives more, you know, the Capitals more incentive to move a guy like Vanacek before the expansion draft and don't leave him in the hands of the Kraken to potentially flip back into your division, whether that's the Devils or the Penguins, or potentially even a team like the Flyers. Um, continuing that trend, it's a little bit different here, but the Florida Panthers, Chris Drieger, he really came on this season for the Florida Panthers, uh, part of that three goalie carousel there for the Cats, uh, where we saw Spencer Knight, Bobrovsky, and Chris Drieger. He is an unrestricted free agent. The Penguin, or uh, the Pit, the Florida Panthers are expected to trade his rights ahead of the expansion draft as they really have nothing to lose in this situation. So it would make sense uh, for Chris Drieger to be traded before. But again, with situations like this, you don't necessarily know. And no, don't ask if uh, the, the Panthers have to decide between Spencer Knight or Sergei Bobrovsky. Sergei Bobrovsky has a no-move clause. And Spencer Knight, because he only played one season in the NHL last year, he is exempt from the expansion draft. So Florida Panthers fans are probably pretty happy about that. So now we're just going down the coast. The Tampa Bay Lightning's Tyler Johnson. Now he's making $5 million till 2024. So uh, $5 million per season at the AAV. So Tyler Johnson with Tampa Bay's cap situation, a little bit different than the teams we just talked about in Florida and Washington. They are looking to move out some cap. And this could be a situation where maybe they trade Tyler Johnson. They say, 
to Ron Francis, hey, you know what? Take Tyler Johnson and our first round pick next year. And you promise that you're going to take Tyler Johnson. And that could be something we see get worked out. And that could really benefit Seattle because they could even take Tyler Johnson and then flip him to acquire another first round pick or even a second round pick, depending on what teams could be interested in Tyler Johnson. And I think there will be plenty of suitors for Tyler Johnson this summer. So there's the situation there. Matt Dumba of the Minnesota Wild. He was able to uh, escape the situation in last uh, the last expansion draft with Vegas. We saw a couple times him and Jonas Brodin were very close to being moved out of mini. And it looks like Matt Dumba could be on his way out this time, potentially to the New Jersey Devils or the Winnipeg Jets. So keep an eye on Matt Dumba trade rumors. His contract does expire in the summer of 2023, so he still has two years left on his deal, uh, which could be a benefit to teams around the league. Like I said, the Winnipeg Jets and the New Jersey Devils, to just to name a few. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks have two guys on my radar. One of these guys, because they need to protect some of their... It depends on how they feel about some of their young def, younger defensemen if they want to protect guys like Hayden Fleury and Brendan Gooley. Uh, as they have Cam Fowler as one of those guys that could stop them from protecting guys like Fleury or Gooley. Uh, Cam Fowler is making $6.5 million per season until the summer of 2026. So, yikes, that's still got five years left on it. That may be one where if the Ducks wanted to move Cam Fowler, they would have to throw in a first-round pick. Or do they throw in Hayden Fleury or Caden Gooley? Again, do you really like that? Because now it's like, is it even worth doing that because you're trying to protect those guys? But maybe you're able to keep the two defensemen, Manson and Montour. Uh, who's the other guy? Manson and Lindholm, right? So those are the two guys you definitely want to keep. Manson and Lindholm and Gooley or Hayden Fleury, right? That's the assumption there. So you keep your three forward, you keep your three defensemen, and then you pick the rest of your forwards, your seven forwards. So that is something to uh, keep in the back of your head. Uh, and that is also leading me into the Anaheim Ducks, potentially moving on from Josh Manson. Maybe there's no suitors for Cam Fowler. Maybe they use Josh Manson as trade bait ahead of the expansion draft. His contract ends next summer, which will be very attractive to teams. We heard him as a name at the trade deadline this year. And he's making $4.1 million next season. So for teams that are in the potential of trying to add to their roster to become a contender next year, I could see teams like the Maple Leafs, if they somehow are able to strangle out a little bit of cap space as a team that could be looking again. We're going back to the Ducks uh, as teams that could be looking at maybe the Devils or the Jets to potentially trade for a guy like Josh Manson, but they don't have the amount of years on their contract like a guy like maybe Matt Dumba would uh, in Minnesota. Another guy to, you know, continue with that theme with defenseman Ryan Graves of the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, he's making $3.2 million for this season and next, which means the summer of 2023, he will be a free agent. Uh, Ryan Graves is a top four defenseman in this league. I think from what we've seen him do with the Avalanche, uh, the question is, do they want to leave a guy like Ryan Graves or Devon Tades unprotected? Because you're going to assume if they do nothing right now, one of those guys will be unprotected. And that is a little bit concerning. And Ryan Graves, you have to realize, he's not going to be uh, cheap to keep in a you know in the summer of 2023. So do the Avs just say, screw it, we'll take the chance that maybe they'll take a guy like Nachushkin or one of those guys? Or maybe they're one of the teams like Tampa where they say, we'll give you a first and a second to take Eric Johnson. Does something like that happen? Again, I don't know the price tag to take a big contract like Eric Johnson. So uh, Tyler Johnson, Eric Johnson, maybe in Seattle, we may see that here. Uh, but that is something to keep in mind because I could see the avalanche. Even again, here's the problem though. Even if they take a guy like Eric Johnson, that still leaves... It doesn't matter who's protected at that point, right? You could leave Ryan Graves or Devontae's unprotected as long as Seattle is guaranteeing that they're taking Eric Johnson. But again, it may come at a hefty price. That's the other part here. All right, so now moving on to the Nashville Predators. Again, two defensemen in Nashville that I think are going to be interesting are 
Matthias Ekholm, who his contract ends next summer. He was a big piece in terms of trade fodder this past trade deadline here in 2021. He's making $3.75 million this season. Again, kind of like Josh Manson, uh, but he's a better defenseman than Josh Manson. He is going to generate lots of interest uh, this summer. Whether he gets sent to Seattle or not, uh, a guy like Matthias Ekholm will definitely be sought after. And uh, the other guy is Dante Fabro, who is a restricted free agent this summer. Uh, we've already heard David Poyle was actually looking to move Dante Fabro at the trade deadline. But I think a lot of teams see maybe a little bit of a concern with Dante Fabro in his development. And maybe the Nashville Predators are stuck maybe giving up a guy like Ekholm or Fabro or maybe leaving them unprotected. And that could be dangerous. And again, this is where David Poyle maybe decides, you know what? In order to keep guys like Ekholm and Fabro, I'll trade next year's first round pick. And with where Nashville is right now, that could be a very dangerous move for David Poyle to make. So you wonder if they decide on moving on from Ekholm or Fabro this summer. They keep their first round pick and they maybe add more assets in terms of trading guys out like Ekholm or Fabro. So now the Philadelphia Flyers are another team like the Tampa Bay Lightning where they be, may be looking to move out some salary. And I think they could be, well, it's pretty much foregone conclusion that the Philadelphia Flyers and their relationship with Jacob Voracek, we will see a divorce or a breakup at some point this summer. Jacob Voracek is making $8.25 million for the next three years. His contract will end in 2024. So the length of the contract, the amount of money he's making per season – the Philadelphia Flyers are a team that is likely going to have to throw in a first and a second potentially uh, round picks in order to move out Jacob Voracek. And does that $8 million free up enough for the Philadelphia Flyers to say, you know what, we're going to give up our first and second round picks to move out that cap space and in order for them to go after guys like maybe a Dougie Hamilton or a Seth Jones this summer. That is something to keep. A very keen eye on this summer in Philadelphia. And then we've got two more guys I'm looking at in St. Louis. Colton Pareko, his contract ends next summer. He's making $5.5 million per season. Uh, this is a guy that I think is going to be interesting because of the fact that teams have talked about trading for Pareko in the past. And this still leaves Vince Dunn unprotected. I haven't even talked about Vince Dunn. Might as well throw him in this category as well. Uh, Colton Pareko and Vince Dunn would definitely be guys that Seattle will definitely be targeting. And I think Colton Pareko has enough value at his cap hit. Again, it, there's not much duration on the deal, so maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing. Uh, but St. Louis, I don't see them trading their first-round pick. I think they're going to be smart, and I think they're going to try and find a way to move out. Again, they could move out Justin Falk. They could move Tory Krug. They could move one of those other defensemen as well. But in order to protect guys maybe like Pareko and Dunn, Maybe they decide to move on from some of those older uh, defensemen they already have on the roster. And then looking at the Winnipeg Jets to wrap things up. Uh, this is just more of a throw-in, but Winnipeg Jets goaltender Laurent Brossois. Laurent Brossois had a really good season for the Jets. The, the Jets had one of the best goalie tandems in the league between Connor Hellebuck and Brossois. I don't see Brossois staying in, uh, in Winnipeg next season. I think he could get a shot as a... Maybe one B option or a starter next year uh, on an NHL team. Whether that's maybe San Jose, Edmonton, uh, New Jersey, maybe even the Chicago Blackhawks, right? So there are teams around the league that we could see Laurent Brossois potentially get moved. And I think there could be a spot there. And to wrap things up, this just came up in my head. But the New York Islanders, Semyon Varlamov. He just brought the team to the conference finals or the semifinals, whatever you want to call them, here in the 2021 playoffs with the New York Islanders. So you wonder if a team's looking for a starting goaltender, do you look at Semyon Varlamov as an option? Because the Islanders are not going to have cap space this year. That is going to be a problem. So maybe do you talk to Edmonton? Do you talk to San Jose? There's one caveat, though. Uh, Semyon Varlamov does have a, no, a modified no-trade clause, which makes things a lot more difficult for the Islanders because if he has teams like the Oilers and the Sharks on that list, it makes it a lot more difficult to move a guy like Varlamov. But there could be definitely suitors there in the picture. So, guys, that is it for this video. Comment down below which of these guys do you think could get traded 
before the expansion draft or is there any names that I forgot to mention in this video? Let me know down below. And if you guys like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL and more videos just like this one, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. And we are getting very close to the Seattle expansion draft. See you guys later.